Just so you know, we have we have five hours. To, so we don't. Uh, all right, I could cut some stuff out. <laughs> all right, welcome to the Tents and Trailers podcast, uh, the first one ever. So today we are here with Chris Robinson, the one, the only, uh, and we are uh, on set of Camp. Uh, <laughs> There's a more famous Chris Robinson. He was the lead singer of the Black Crows. He was married to Kate Hudson. So I'd Got say you. he was the one and only. <laughs> I am merely a, uh, a pretender. <laughs> so uh, the podcast is going to read interview with Chris Robinson. I'm going to get a million views. And you're going to say it's not because of you. Hey, everybody. Please. First of all, sorry. It's not the one you hope. <laughs> not that Chris. Yeah. I was not, unfortunately, married to Kate Hudson. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um... And uh, so we're on set at uh, Camping in the Amazon, and uh, so we just wanted to uh, check in with some of our contestants. This is, uh, and uh, so what I was looking for is, uh, Chris, what got you into camping? Well, uh, I started as a young lad. Um, I was in Boy Scouts, Cub Scouts. I liked Cub Scouts because it was just activities in, uh, in, in your backyard with your troop leader or whatever. Uh, my best friend's mom was our troop leader, so that was really fun. We got to learn how to, like, saw a plank of wood in half, tie knots, stuff like that. And then Boy Scouts, uh, we got a different troop leader. Uh, he was, he was a doorknob, and all the other dads of the kids who were there were all doorknobs. So I really, really hated it, but my best friend was still in it, so I did it, uh, for, like, I don't know, however long you do Boy Scouts, all the way up until I got uh, life, the life badge, which is one before Eagle, which is one before graduation. And all I really needed to do was do that presentation that you need to do to be an Eagle and do your Eagle Scout project. And that just sounded like I didn't want to do it. So I didn't do it. Um, and my, my friend had already done it. So he had already like graduated and he had left or whatever. So I was alone with no friend and I just, I completely gave up. So I don't have the, the, the stamp on my resume that says that I was an Eagle Scout. Cause you can't just say I was a boy scout. I was a life scout. Um, Anyway, basically, I'm disappointed in myself. <laughs> is what I'm is what I'm getting at. Okay, but, but you you got your love for camping from that. From no, I events. got my hatred of camping through that, uh, uh, okay. and then I didn't camp for a decade, probably. And then our our friends at the place that we all worked at together uh, all went camping, and I had no interest in camping because of the you know Boy Scout thing. Uh, but one of them bailed, uh, and they had like a two inch thick steak, a porterhouse steak. And they're like an hour away from me. And they're like, Hey, Chris, uh, one of these guys bailed and we have a steak with your name on it if you want it. So I drove an hour each way <laughs> to go eat a steak in the woods with my friends. And it was no joke, the best steak I've still ever had in my life. Uh, and I thought, well, if this is how adults camp, <laughs> then maybe I could give it a shot. Yeah. Uh, and since then I've gone camping with these guys at at least once a year, every year since then. Uh, now I'm back into it. I love it. I go camping with my fiance. That was like one of the first things we bonded over. So we've gone on many camping trips. Uh, and now it's like m my favorite thing that I do. It's like my favorite hobby uh, is camping. So um, basically Boy Scouts are terrible. <laughs> <laughs> they made what could have been a person who loves camping hate camping until I did it in a fun non-Boy Scouty way. Got you. Got you. I mean, and, and nowadays, you know, it's called the Scouts, and you can have whoever you want to join, so uh, that's that's cool. I probably um, can't rejoin. That would be weird, right? That would There would be some red flags. You can't. Just to finish, right? Like It's like going back to college, just to finish up your degree. Let me go back, build a bench, and do an interview in front of some folks and get an Eagle bench. Yeah. Let's talk about your shelter. Uh, what is it uh, that, that brought you to what we see here today? Uh, what, you know, what made you choose the things you chose? Thank you for asking. Um, almost no thought was put into it. Um, I <laughs> wanted to do a hammock cause I've been into hammock camping, sleeping now. Um, so I looked up the cheapest hammock I could on Amazon, but I also, I knew that bugs might be a problem. It turns out they were. Uh, and I thought that rain and cold might be a problem. So I got this insulated rain tarp thing bug net included all in one hammock for like 25 bucks. Um, it's hot as balls today and yesterday, so I didn't need the rain thing, but I flipped it inside out and I turned it into like a sunshade. Um, I think it's working pretty well. Yeah, it's not bad. I just hung out in there for a little while. It does already have a couple holes in it, so uh, I will fall and hit my head on a rock and die on this camping trip. So um, this is the evidence for the police that will be looking into my cause of death. 
Uh, it was Ryan's fault. <laughs> Ryan Lotowski. Um, so start, start your search for him. <laughs> I also have a sleeping bag. Mm, uh, I yeah. got a pretty cheapo sleeping bag. Uh, thought it might be not insulated enough because it's April in New England, and I thought it would be freezing. Again, hot as balls. <laughs> uh, and I also got an inflatable pillow because one of the things, I'm going to be honest with you, Ryan, I wasn't super jazzed about this, the whole idea of this camping trip because Amazon, whatever, they have enough money, and I didn't want to buy a bunch of crap that I would throw away. But Tom over here uh, suggested that I buy things that I keep uh, or am able to donate. So I also got an inflatable, uh, pillow, which I've never had. And I've always wanted an inflatable pillow. So I'm keeping that inflatable pillow. Nice. The, uh, I don't think the hammock will make it home if I'm being honest <laughs> and I don't feel comfortable donating it and being the cause of someone else's death. Um, so I think that might find its way into the trash. Okay. Uh, but I might keep the straps. I'm going to keep the tarp and then, uh, the camping bag will be like a, an emergency, like keep it in the car. I also got foil as we yes. saw in the video. Yeah, how, did, duty. how did that work out? That worked out much better than I thought. I am now a huge fan of, of foil cooking. It's way too easy. There is zero cleanup. You just crumple it into a ball and throw it in the trash. Um, I cooked, uh, I got a, a frozen meal, one of those like uh, like P.F. Chang's beef and broccoli thing. Um, and I just removed it from that bag and put it into the foil and it came out delicious. Um, it generated a lot of gas in my gastrointestinal system. Uh, and then for breakfast this morning, I got a can of Hornell um, corned beef hash uh, with a couple eggs on top. Hormel. Hormel. <laughs> Hornell. Oh, no, Hornell. There's someone else, yeah. You made me Hornell. It sure did. Um, it sure did. And uh, that did not come out great, uh, if I'm being honest. <laughs> Things that should be cooked separately should not go in a foil pouch together. It made kind of a sticky, half-raw egg, half-overcooked egg goop. Um, but it was tasty, mm -hmm. and we'll see if I get food poisoning later. If I do die of food poisoning, uh, please look for Ryan Lotowski. <laughs> it is his fault. <laughs> what was the kind of thought process behind it? Do you have other things that you were choosing to cook with, or was it like that was your... So what we have discovered on this trip is Tom and I pretty much had or started with the exact same idea. Uh, Tom has this really cool cooking kit. That I'll let him explain when it's his turn, but I had that exact cooking kit in my cart, um, I wanted to do some gas cooking, uh, and I realized I wanted to bring some other things, uh, like my copy of The Hobbit on paperback. Um, that was a must-have. Couldn't leave the cart. So I needed to save some money elsewhere, so I figured a $5 roll, roll of uh, heavy, heavy-duty heavy aluminum foil would beat out the $20 kit, which I do wish I had, because that's one of those things that I do not own, which would have fit really nicely into the things I could buy for this trip, but then also add to my, my cooking uh, pile in my yeah. attic. Our camping pile. Yeah. But uh, that was my thought process. Basically, save money. Okay. <laughs> Do everything as cheap as possible. <laughs> um, and, and how was, you know, dealing with the budget? Was that something that, like, you felt like it was difficult to, to keep it under that $100 or something that kind of, you know, rolled off? I get you. I get yeah. what you're saying. You know what I hate, Ryan? Tax. <laughs> because I was looking at everything, adding it all up, seeing it in my cart. It came out to, like... I don't know, 95 bucks or something like that. And then when I went to check out, uh, I got all free shipping. You're looking at a prime member, baby. And, uh, I, uh, the tax bumped it up to like $106 or something like that. So I had to remove something, but then everything, there was a lot of synergy between my items. So if I removed this thing, then that other thing that I put in the cart wouldn't really make sense because I need that thing to complete this thing. Um, so that was tough. So I did, I think I started with a tent, actually. I was going to go uh, sleeping pad, small one-person backpacking tent or something, uh, because I don't have a sleeping bag, uh, sleeping pad, so I would have liked to add that to my repertoire. Um, but then I ended up switching to the hammock and moving some things around. Ended up spending $99.97, which I'm pretty proud of. Yeah. Um, but that was almost purely by accident. <laughs> Because with the, the Hobbit book, right? <laughs> the Hobbit book had to stay. I got the cheapest version of the Hobbit book, which miraculously, it was delayed until like May 17th or something like that. It's April 13th or something today. Uh, and it showed up at 10 a.m. the day before we left. Uh, and I left the door at like 1230. So it literally showed up like two hours before I left. Um, so that was nice. And I've read at least the first full page. 
So <laughs> nice. It's, it's going to good use. Is this a book that you already owned or something that you had not owned? It is a book that I already owned. So I was going to cheat a little bit. And since I bought it on Amazon and it wasn't going to arrive on you time, I would have bring it. my version of it. <laughs> got it, got it. As got a like it. for like replacement. Okay. But luckily it arrived. Yeah, and that's something that you can donate re- re- after, right? No, I'd rather have two copies of it. Oh, so it. I can okay. read right. with each hand. <laughs> Leave one in your car. Well, yeah, I, you need a car copy of The Hobbit, so I might leave one in the car. Yeah. No, I'm yeah. probably going to donate it. Okay, and so uh, what are your favorite places to camp? <laughs> Ooh, um, Vermont. There's a place in Vermont I do not remember the name of, but it's nice, let me tell you. There's uh, a, a, it's the... Uh, not the place? one we've been to. Oh, okay, another place? The one I went to with, with, with my fiancé. With your fiancé. Yes, uh, Acadia National Park. Mm. Uh, my, my goal with my fiancé, we want to hit up as many national parks as we can before we die. There's like 63 main ones. We don't think we'll get to all 63, but, you know, that's the goal. Mm. Uh, and we've been to one so far, uh, and it was Acadia National Park. We got engaged there, so that's uh, I'm a little bit biased towards that place, but it's a very lovely, lovely place. Um, so hit up Acadia if you've never been, and that place in Vermont that uh, I will put a link in the description for. <laughs> I was just going to say, we will drop a link in the description uh, of that location. That's cool. Comment what you think it is for a chance to win an all-inclusive paid trip to that place, wherever it is. Ryan Foster will send you the money for it. Yep. <laughs> Cash in an envelope, in a dead drop, in a USPS <laughs> mailbox on the corner of 5th and Broadway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You just send all three of the listeners to that place. Exactly. Uh, um, With a sharpened pool cue, and you will fight it out, and whoever wins becomes king of that campground. Or queen. Um, okay. And uh, what is your uh, preferred way to camp? Comfortably. Not in a $25 hammock bought from Amazon. <laughs> not in a tarp sandwich. <laughs> and not in a uh, slow cooker. <laughs> Uh, I like, uh... Well, you're taking a lot of liberties with the word slow. <laughs> <laughs> Not any pressure cooker. Yeah. Uh, I like Tom's 14-person tent. I like my air mattress. I've recently just discovered, uh, about myself on my, my self-camping journey that I don't like the confinement of a sleeping bag. So I like to do, I like to get two square sleeping bags, open them both up, have one on the bottom, one on top, and just my legs can be loosey-goosey, like a, a used car, balloon, f- floaty, hands man. Um, Cause that's how I sleep all over the place. Um, I sleep on my stomach with my leg as high as it can go. Uh, it's like kind of a, a K, a capital letter K is how I sleep. Uh, so yeah, sleeping bags aren't for me. I like to be uh, all stretched out. So air mattress, blankets, stuff like that. Uh, obscenely large tent uh, is kind of my, my jam. Um, and so what, when you're not with Tom to get the 12 person tent or 15 percent, what, what do you normally sleep? What do you normally go with? Well, like when we did, when you went to Arcadia to yeah, yeah, yeah. propose my, to your wife, my fiance, fiance, I'm not there yet. Okay. <laughs> uh, my fiance and I are just two people. So we only need a nine person tent. <laughs> Um, so we have a very long, wide nine-person tent um, that's quite lovely. It's very easy to set up. It's like a dome tent with two like side domes, so it's very, very wide. So we put like our, our bed situation over here. When it rains, we put our chairs inside and just kind of kick back with some like string lights. Uh, very nice, very vibey. Um, but I also like uh, when I'm camping here with the boys. Sometimes I like to do my not $25 hammock. Uh, with something over me. I tried that last time, and it was a big hit. I ended up doing it two nights in a row, so I might do that uh, tonight. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Um, and have you had any experience with hiking and, and camping and hiking? Do I? Uh, I'll let the, the other guy tell you about it when it's his turn, but uh, we hiked part of the Connecticut part of the Appalachian Trail, and I died. I passed away. I uh, <laughs> ceased to exist. I got shin splints so bad that I had to call out of work the next day, and I could only crawl around my apartment. Uh, I needed to go to the bathroom, and I was on all fours, just letting my legs dangle behind me uh, like a paralyzed bunny rabbit. Um, and uh, <laughs> uh, it was it was a nightmare. Um, but I was not prepared for it at all. My fiance and I go uh, like day hiking sometimes in the spring and summer, so we're about to get started uh, with that. I live right at the base of Mount Tom in Massachusetts, so we just drive two minutes to the parking lot and go up there a couple times. Um, and then I want to start like practicing that with a backpack, and then we eventually want to try backpack 
camping uh, sometime, the two of us. Because um, we have friends who just quit their jobs, my coworkers who just quit their jobs, and they're going to go hike the, uh, the PCT. So that'll be cool. Uh, mm. And kind of jealous, but also I don't think I'll ever do that in my life. But backpack camping is pretty cool. So it's something I'm trying to get into. Cool. Cool. Um, and you had uh, said something about... Uh, a VW bus, like what? What would be your ideal uh, uh, trailer or vehicle that you would transition into a camping area? Yeah. So the other day I was talking about uh, you have a trailer. This other guy has a trailer. He has an RV. Uh, I've always wanted to have like a camper van, and I specifically want to like renovate a van, like you guys renovated a trailer. Um, but I want like a like one of those Amazon vans, uh, like a thirty five hundred or something like that, or uh, there's like some good Mercedes vans, um, that look quite spacious and I've seen a lot of renovation videos on. And every time I see one, I'm like, I can do that. If I had thousands of dollars in tools, which I could slowly amass over time. Um, yeah, I just wanted to have like a cool, like tricked out some kind of van, either like a VW bug that would be kind of tiny or like one of those Amazon vans or just like a van, like a, like a U-Haul sized van. Um, or we were joking, uh, a USPS truck or an ambulance <laughs> would be kind of cool. I've seen an ambulance renovation, um, cause it just comes with so much storage. So that'll be something for down the line once I get a house first. Um, and then my job might move me out to the West. So if I go out West, that'll be a really cool place to get started with that and just take the van to a national park out there and, and hang out in the van for a couple days. So we'll see. TBD. Cool. Cool. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. I really appreciate it, uh, your time. And, and, and thank you so much for doing the camping in the Amazon thing. I, I really appreciate that as well. And I think that'd be uh, really cool for people to check it out. So check it out in the link in the description below uh, for the video camping in the Amazon. You can see Chris doing some crazy stuff with uh, setting up his uh, area and cooking some cool stuff. Uh, so check that out. All right, bye. <laughs>